Breaking just a few minutes ago, the jury in the E. Jean Carroll defamation case has ordered Fre former President Trump to pay E. Jean Carroll more than $83 million in damages. Uh, J uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano, our senior judicial analyst, is joining us now. Judge, this is $18 million in compensatory damages, $65 million in punitory. What does this mean? This means that uh, Ms. Carroll and her lawyers were able to satisfy the jury that Donald Trump uh, defamed her by saying something that he knew was false or was reckless in his disregard for the false and the falsity, and that she suffered $18 million in economic loss, in pain and suffering, uh, in emotional distress. This also means that Donald Trump did this willingly and knowingly, and he should be punished for doing it to the tune of $65 million, a truly staggering amount of money. Staggering amount of money. Wow. Can he appeal this? Yes, he can appeal it. He's got to pay that money into the court, or he's got to guarantee, have, have a, a third party guarantee that money, like an insurance carrier, uh, based upon uh, real estate that he would have to pledge. Yeah, Carl, run is, is not an exaggeration. I, I sprinted out of that courtroom. The jury had deliberated for about 2.5 hours before they came to this conclusion. Uh, and they decided that they did want to award Miss Carroll $7.3 million in other damages, $11 million for her reputation repair program, and then that $65 million, that's for punitive damages. So the judge had asked the jury three questions uh, for them to think over as they were making their deliberations. The first, did Miss Carroll suffer more than nominal damage? To that answer was yes. That's where you get the $11.3 million from. And then they asked the next two questions, which uh, are both of those June statements that Trump had made, which is what E. Jean Carroll was essentially uh, overall suing him for was those true uh, those two June defamatory uh, statements that he made on his true social account. And to those, both of the jurors, jurors did answer yes to both of those, that they do believe that he had malice and hatred when he did make those. And that's where that uh, $83.3 million is coming from overall. He walked right to the bodysuit and snatched it up and said, go put this on. Now, that struck me as so funny because here I am, 52. I am not going to be put. My idea was, I said, no, you put it on. And he said, no, it looks like it fits you. I said, no, it goes with your eyes. So I am spinning a comedy scene and in my head. Of course, banter back and forth. I get it. But you banter. see how funny that would be to make him put yes. that on. You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Which, the word rape carries so many sexual connotations. This was not, this was not sexual. For, it just, it, it hurt. It just, what, it just, you know. Well, I think most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not I think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more. Yeah. You go into the dressing room. You think that he's going to hold it up against him. Yeah. And then it gets violent. Well, he, the minute he, he went like this, I proceeded him into the dressing room. The minute he closed that door, I was banged up against the wall. He slammed you against the wall. Yeah, I hit my head really hard. Boom. He said, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened, okay? I love that. You I am so glad I am not his type. And then he tried to kiss me, which was, it was so hard. But so my reaction was to laugh, to knock off the erotic whatever he had going on. Because the man, when you laugh at him, he's like, Ugh. no, you know, he just went at it. This is one person you talk about in your book. This is not a book about Donald Trump. This is not, there's no. not Donald Trump on the cover. This is about no. your life and- we don't even mention his name. I mentioned his name once in the book. This is beyond sexual. I mean, legally, he raped you. I don't use the word. I have difficulty with the word. I, because I you think see that it, it is as a fight. It's a posh and cozy. Your and whole just, face lights up when you talk about Bert Darfield, I just, by the way. I was just there today. Okay. It just, I just loved it. But yours actually goes further in terms of being legally raped. That's what it was. I wonder if you could speak to what it is that you actually gain and also what you lose by going through this. Uh, it's not, Alexa, it's not about the money. Not right. about the money. He asked, I said, how old is the young lady? And he said, how old are you? And I said, 52. And he said, you're so old.
He said that? Of course. He said, you're so old. I get up around noon and I stagger outside out the store and I throw open my arms and I thank God I don't have children. Then I go back in, stagger into my office and start reading a stack of ASCII gene letters. He was gonna get some lingerie. And I am just like, oh, well, I can dine out forever on this story, we're gonna go get lingerie. I could not answer the questions coming into the ASCII gene column if I was in New York City. You can't think in New York if you're dating 16 people, which I would be doing if I were in New York. Did he say anything? No, no. It was just like, we're gonna do this thing. We're just so hot for each other. Let me take you to the jungle in my head where we're animals and we'll take you off to I call it the mouse house because some very distinguished uh, mice live here. Uh, Kahneman lives in the kitchen, Taberski lives in the bedroom. This is my shed. And on that side are the books that most influenced me growing up. On the door are the list of my dogs, Marky, Fortuna de la Spunky, Heidi, Tits, Bloody, and Hepburn. The streams and the rivers were dry. And I, it so horrified me that I came out and started painting the rocks blue to indicate that there was once a river here. And then after I got done painting the rocks, I just sort of walked over here and then did that tree and then did that tree and then I did this tree. And then pretty soon I'd done this whole forest. Oh my God! What's the best piece of advice I've ever given? What a horrible question to ask an advice column. Oh my God. Hang on. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's it. That's my advice. <laughs>